Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is BLS Medication Administration, Nebulized Albuterol. After watching this video, providers will understand the criteria and basic physiology for respiratory distress, recognize the indications for administration of albuterol, understand basic mechanisms of action for albuterol, recognize the cautions for administration of albuterol, and understand how to administer albuterol via a nebulizer. The criteria for respiratory distress or bronchospasm in the MELREMS protocol includes an oxygen saturation less than 92%, cyanosis, respiratory rate less than 8 or greater than twice the normal for the patient's age, use of accessory muscles for respiration, and auscultation of adventitious breath sounds such as wheezing or strider or markedly decreased air movement. It's important to note the respiratory distress patients may present with any one or more of these symptoms, but do not necessarily require all of the symptoms in order to meet this criteria. The following animation gives a brief overview of the physiology of asthma. During breathing, the air inhaled through the nose and mouth enters the respiratory passages. Then, the air entering the respiratory system passes through the trachea, then splits into the bronchi, bronchioles, and finally enters tiny sacs called alveoli, where the exchange of gases takes place. Asthma is a disorder of obstruction to breathing due to inflammation and narrowing of the bronchial tubes. Initially, the bronchial tubes become inflamed and produce thick mucus. Later, the muscle surrounding these airways tightens and air cannot move freely. This is called bronchospasm. The result is shortness of breath and the air moving through the tightened airways causes a whistling sound known as wheezing. Pollen, pet dander, weather changes, tobacco smoke, etc. can trigger and worsen asthma symptoms in susceptible patients. Short-acting bronchodilator drugs, which can be inhaled, provide immediate dilation of the constricted bronchi. One very important step in the assessment of any respiratory distress patient is to listen to lung sounds. Lung sounds should be listened to from the back whenever possible. Take note if the lung sounds are quieter or absent on one side. and Listen for wheezes, crackles, and strider. In asthma patients, it's common to hear wheezing, especially during the expiratory phase, a prolonged expiratory phase, or severely diminished lung sounds. Listen now to the following example of wheezes in a patient with asthma. Under the MELREMS protocol, BLS providers are permitted to assist patients with a meter dose inhaler if they have it present. In the event that a patient does not realize any relief from their meter dose inhaler or does not have their own inhaler or nebulizer, a BLS provider may administer nebulized albuterol to patients between the age of 1 and 65 who have been diagnosed with asthma and are prescribed the use of albuterol, provided that the agency has been approved for albuterol use and the provider has been trained in albuterol administration. So albuterol causes bronchodilation by its effects on the beta-2 receptors. So by affecting the beta-2 receptors, it causes bronchial smooth muscle vasodilation. Some of the side effects of albuterol are related to its effects on the beta-1 receptors in the heart. So the side effects that can occur are most, most often tachycardia, tachyarrhythmias, or bronchospasm. So if you have a patient that already has a baseline tachycardia, you want to use albuterol with caution and potentially use a lower dose. In someone that has a tachyarrhythmia, albuterol would be contraindicated. To review, albuterol causes bronchodilation and increased airflow. 
It should be used with caution in patients with tachycardias and is contraindicated in patients with a tachydysrhythmia, such as rapid AFib, VTAC, or an active SVT. Additionally, albuterol should not be used in patients who are experiencing respiratory failure, such as those patients with decreased level of consciousness or who require assisted ventilations. Also, under the MELREMS protocol, BLS providers must contact medical control prior to administering albuterol if the patient has a cardiac history. In order to administer albuterol, the provider first needs to assemble the nebulizer and add the appropriate dose of albuterol. For adults, this is 5 mg or 2 pre-measured tubes. For children, 2.5 mg or 1 pre-measured tube. Attach oxygen to the nebulizer and set the flow between 6 and 10 liters per minute. Coach the patient to take deep breaths in through their mouth. Continue to monitor vitals and carefully watch the heart rate and blood pressure. Activate and meet ALS. BLS may administer up to two total doses if ALS is not available. Remember that if ALS is on scene, they may not release to BLS once albuterol administration has taken place. Watch now as our BLS crew administers albuterol to an asthma patient in respiratory distress. What's your name, sir? My name is Mike. Mike, what's going on? I'm having a hard time catching my breath. Okay, do you have any medical? Do you have any medical problems? I have asthma. Do you have asthma? Prescribed albuterol? Okay, do you have your uh, inhaler with you? Not with me. No, you haven't taken it? His bilateral wheezes, brother. You give him a nebulizer. Do you have any allergies to any medications? No. No? Can we get on our albuterol? How much are you giving, Johnny? You five milligrams of albuterol. For me, and I want uh, six to eight liters. Six to eight liters per minute. Okay. Okay, that's on six okay. to eight liters. Okay, sir. I want you to take this deep breaths. Okay, try to hold the medication in. Nice deep breaths. It should start to help you in a few minutes. Johnny, dispatch sent the page. There are no ALS units available. Okay. We're going to start transporting the hospital and get going. Okay, I'll have that. breaths. Let's review the respiratory distress bronchospasm protocol one more time. First, assess the patient for signs and symptoms of respiratory distress. If the patient meets the criteria listed in the protocol, provide routine medical care, including high flow oxygen. Next, assess signs and symptoms in hemodynamic stability, including vital signs the ability to speak in full sentences, the presence of accessory muscle use, and adventitious lung sounds such as wheezing or strider. If the patient appears to have asthma and has their own inhaler or nebulizer, you may assist the patient in using the device. Next, if required, determine if the patient is eligible for albuterol. If the patient meets the criteria in the protocol, you may administer the appropriate dose of albuterol for the patient's age. Remember, medical control should be contacted first if the patient has a cardiac history, such as congestive heart failure, angina, arrhythmias, or a previous heart attack. Lastly, timely transport with ALS if ALS is available. Remember that ALS cannot release to BLS for transport after albuterol has been administered. In summary, now that you've watched this video, you should understand the criteria and basic physiology for respiratory distress. You should recognize the indications for administration of albuterol and understand basic mechanism of action for albuterol. You should also recognize the cautions for administration of albuterol and understand how to administer albuterol using a nebulizer.